Tongue is our culinary brewery in Pilsen, Chicago. We have a 25 barrel brew house that makes culinary beers. We're drawn to culinary beer because my background before being a brewer was a classically trained cook. For me, I see a lot of the similarities between brewing and cooking. That all stems from using the best ingredients, handling it properly, and then incorporating back into, I guess in our case, liquid. Green Star Brewing was a project that was first in the minds of the owners of Common Ground almost immediately when they started uh, the business 23 years ago. We had always wanted to do it and it always was meant to be part of the Uncommon Ground story. We just never had the space, nor did we have the money to do it. So we saved our pennies up, and when we had the money, we saved a storefront, you know, got rehabbed it and said, okay, this is where a brewery's gonna go. So here we are, 23 years later. The idea, the first organic brewery in Illinois, is something super exciting to me. Well, it turns out it's a great time to be in the industry. There's more and more great ingredient suppliers coming up every day. We get to source our yeast locally now and most of our hops. Scratch Brewing is the culmination of a few different ideas. We all wanted to make beer that is really representative of where we live. I spent a lot of time as a young kid in the woods and I dug herbs in the summer. I would sell several different herbs and roots, so we use a lot of ingredients from the forest in our beers. Aaron and Ryan and I started as home brewers and we were playing around with all kinds of different farmed and foraged ingredients that we were getting locally from friends and farmers, growing in our gardens, finding in our backyards. And we decided to pool our brains and resources and do it together. So this place is what grew out of that. Being a smaller operation, we can go out for a day and gather the ingredients that we need to do a batch of beer. We'll probably use over 120 to 130 different kinds of herbs throughout the year. It adds another level of complexity to brewing because as far as malt and hops, you know exactly how they're going to act whenever you use them. For the most part, you do. but. For all the other things that we use, we have done a lot of experimentation and figured out a lot of it. We want to make sure, as brewers, that if we do use an additional ingredient beyond hops, malt, water, and yeast, that it's an exceptional ingredient. That could mean going to your local farmer's market and developing relationships with your farmers, seeing what's in season, what's having a good year, or what maybe you should skip. It's a cool community because brewing is a science and an art and each brewer has their own interpretation and I think that's one of the reasons why there's no real harsh competition in craft beer is because we're all our own artists on our own pedestals and doing our sort of own unique thing. Being a smaller brewery, we can go to smaller farmers. We don't have to worry about ramping this up on a huge volume. I think that we are so small that we'll be able to grow for years and still be able to source all of our ingredients organically. I think regardless of size, we're always going to be perfectionists. We pride ourselves on attention to detail, and I think when you pay attention to the details, you're able to create really beautiful things. In our case, it's beer. So whether it's cacao, whether it's one nectarine, whether it's truffle, we're going to pay attention to every single one because we know that it's the sum of all these ingredients that really develop layers of flavor and aromatics. It's mainly just the three of us here working all week and then we're here on the weekends too. But all three of us are here talking to our customers when we come in. So, you know, we've really developed a lot of close relationships with people. And I think people like hearing the stories of when we're going out and finding ingredients and stuff like that. The scale that we're on kind of makes that easy for us to make those connections with people. What started as home brewing back in 2002 turned in our family's dream in 2006 when we decided to open our brew pub here in Bourbon A, Brickstone Brewery. Brickstone is your local family-owned brewery. It's a great place for people come and gather, try great craft beers. 
We started brewing on a five barrel brew house, which expanded throughout the years to a 25 barrel tank. Now our current project is a 50 barrel four vessel automated brew house, which includes 150 barrel fermenters. Buckle Down's uh, about a year and a half old. As a brewery, we're kind of all about uh, working hard, getting our hands dirty, getting stuff done. Ike and I started it after meeting in another industry. Both were home brewing. His beers were lots better than mine. But we shared a bunch of beers together, decided to start a brewery. It's just really all about approachable beers that are crafted really finely, best ingredients, and just try to make beers that are great to drink. RK Brewery actually started as an art project. I was an artist in the city and decided to turn gallery spaces into brewing spaces. It was kind of serendipitous that Hale Syndicate came along at the same time we were sort of forming this idea for RK Brewery. They wanted to have other breweries as part of their brewing operation and their mission, and so we reached out to them. They came and checked out one of my art shows where we were brewing beer in the gallery, and we just kind of hit it off from there. My brother Samuel and I were living in Northern California and we were home brewing there, but we were able to start because we were able to use our fermenters in another brewery space. So that process helped us get started without investors or anything else at the time. So when we started this brewery, it was always about like working with other brewers to get them started. And Arcade Brewing Company were our first partners when it was just a concept. So it's really great because everybody's here for a certain period of time and then they're gonna go find their own opportunities. Financially, it was a really great way to help us start, but beyond just the money, the ability to really collaborate with one another on ideas and just share knowledge is amazing. It's a two-way street, and it's really fun and collaborative in the whole entire brewing process. Having the brew pub and the production brewery right across the street from each other, we're able to brew specialty beers here. And with our production facility, we're able to brew larger batches and get our flagship beers out for everybody to try. We get the large enough capacity to brew a different array of beers and then it's small enough that we can keep them all fresh. On a larger scale, if you brew 500 barrels of a beer that, oh no, nobody likes it, as opposed to here, we can do 25 kegs and use it as a test batch. And if it sells well, boost it up over there and distribute it. It's really all about uh, the ability to grow. We've got the canning line coming in, uh, going to be installed in the next month, and directly after that we're bringing on four more 30-barrel fermenters to really support that canning line. People are really thirsty for craft beer. You know, there's high demand, so you know our distributor wants volume to be able to satisfy that demand, and so do we. We've been overwhelmed by the outpouring here in the tap room and the people that keep coming back and the friends that we've made here just by pouring beers and talking about them. And uh, if you start a relationship, and at least you get the opportunity to slide your beer across the bar and say, hey, this is mine, I'm proud of it. It gets back to the way things used to be done. The amount that we've grown in the seven, eight months since we've been in here is pretty incredible. And not only are we learning a lot from Ale Syndicate, but we're even finding ourselves dishing out some knowledge too. We have been working for a long time to grow and build. But one of the things that we really want to do is we have unfiltered, unpasteurized beer that we don't want to spread all over the country. We don't want to be in 14 different states. And so when we grow, we want to know that everything is protected through its whole life and that the beer is fresh and good. All breweries have a different kind of shape and size that naturally fits them. And if you're making good beer and you know how to get it out there to people, you'll always find room in the market. Brothers, you know, Jason and I founded in 1996. We both lived in Europe, and social experience of beer there was a lot different than it was in the United States. We'd had a real affinity for kind of trying to replicate that European social experience and bringing people together. Last year, we produced about 45,000 barrels, of which we sold about 35,000 barrels of that in the calendar year. So it's come a long way in 18 years.
Revolution's been on pace this year to brew 70,000 barrels. Once we get our new brew house online, we'll probably be able to brew over 100,000 barrels this year. And then the year after, probably 100,000 plus. Our primary focus right now is trying to keep our beer as local as we can. Lagunitas is in our first year of brewing. We've brewed 21 different beers out of Lagunitas, Chicago. Basically 24-7 we're brewing here. What the brew house is capable of is over 500,000 barrels a year just with the single brew house. So with the commissioning of the second brew house and then the added fermenters that'll be coming in, that'll put us up towards 1.2 million barrels a year. The volume is cool and the volume is definitely going up and that's great because we get to reach more people. It's opening some very interesting doors for us that we're able to step through now and do cooler things. It's more than just a brewery. Lagunita starts to become a lifestyle. You live and breathe this culture both when you're at work and when you're not at work. It's such a feeling of openness that this company has created for the employees but also for the public I think as well. Everyone is just so excited to be here, you know. It's just amazing to see thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming through these doors and it's all because of the beer. Even when we brew more in a day than we brewed in the whole first year we were open, we always remind ourselves, hey, step back, don't take yourself too seriously, remember to have some fun at this. We're a brewery, let's enjoy it along with giving our guests enjoyment as well. When you get to be a brewery this size, there's a lot of structure and there's a lot of trying to ensure every beer tastes exactly the same, which means trying to do exactly the same thing every day. But we give our brewers some opportunities throughout the year to really be creative. We have projects like our Brewer's Choice Beer. They design the recipes, they design the labels, they just do all of it. And as we get bigger, it's fun to be able to support projects like that. Part of keeping consistency is being able to roll with the punches with your raw materials, your barley, your hops, because it's never a known quantity. And luckily being here in Illinois, right by Lake Michigan, a wonderful water source, we don't have to worry about water, but you really have to try to be on top of it and do the best you can to try to reproduce the beer with the same color, aroma, and flavor profile time after time, which is very, very challenging. Everyone works hard and they play hard. We support each other. That's the biggest thing. And if you don't have that support and that camaraderie in a brewery, you're going to have a very, very difficult time letting your brewery expand rapidly. Chicago is just an amazing city all together. There's so much pride in anything that's made here. So we've just felt welcomed by the entire community. The beer community here is very supportive of one another. It's great to see smaller scale breweries, larger scale breweries. The passion is the same. You know, in that big batch, there's as much love in there as there is in that small one. Rising tides raise all ships, as the saying goes, and we think it really holds true in the craft beer community. We need all the experimental stuff that everybody's doing. We need all the beers that are accessible every day at the grocery store. Instead of being macro domestics, we need it to be Illinois craft and even U.S. craft. The Brewers Guild has been a huge, huge factor for Illinois brewing as a whole and across the country as well. I mean, the brewing industry is super strong and when the brewing industry as a whole grows, it's good for everybody.